after all of your hoops have been installed, you're now ready to install your four corner cross braces. These are shown here with the black arrow pointing to them. There's one at each corner of your structure. They're installed using brace bands and bolts and nuts, and they're used to plumb your end hoop up so that you can then run other horizontal members from one end of your tunnel all the way down to the other end of your tunnel. These are used to protect against wind. Here's a close up again of a cross brace moving at a 45 degree angle to your end hoop. Other than your cross brace, the main piece of hardware you're going to need is a brace band. This is a picture of a brace band here, and it is used to go right over the hoop. It allows you to more easily connect a cross member or a horizontal member to a round tube. Here I am pushing a brace band on an end hoop, and I'm gonna push one onto the second hoop as well. And you can push them on if you uh, feel up to it, or you can tap them on with a hammer. Since the camera was kind of far away when I pushed those on, I'm just going to show you how I did it. Thumb on the interior of the brace band, palm pushing downward, get it on there, and then I'd use channel locks, but here I'm just using my fingers to pull that together. Once they're on, you're going to want to close up the open end with channel locks. And you're just going to close them up so they're, the, they're about a quarter inch apart so you can fit a bolt through the open ends. And uh, you know sometimes they're difficult here, like you can see me fumbling in the cold. You're just gonna push it on there and you know uh, squeeze them together a little bit. So the first step, uh, I like to do the the end hoop first. So I'll, I'll put the uh, brace band up to the end of the cross brace, where the hole in the cross brace lines up to the brace band holes. And sticking the bolt from the outside in, I. Uh, I, I thumb tighten the nut on there and then I can lift up to an appropriate angle so that I can then line up the hole in the bottom of the cross brace with the brace band resting on top of that second ground post. And then I'm just going to thumb tighten that into place. You'll repeat this process for all four corners of your structure. Once your corner cross braces have been thumb tightened into place, you're now ready to tighten the nut and bolt on the bottom and move on to plumbing your end hoop. Since the bottom of your cross brace is always going to be secured right above the ground post, you're going to take that cross brace bottom and secure it with a half inch drive socket or an impact driver. There's more than one way to plumb your end hoop. Uh, one way is using a torpedo level where you put it on the end hoop and then you adjust your cross braces to get plumb. But another way of plumbing your end hoop is with a string and a straight member, which I'm going to show you now. Um, you're going to wrap around a string and attach it as such. And this string is going along the front face of your structure. And you'll do what I did here on both sides so that this string runs from one side all the way to another. Here's a closer look here. You're going to pull it tight all the way across so you can get a straight line. Using the line you just ran in a straight member, in this case, two inch square steel tube, you're going to use that line as a guide. And the straight member I refer to is going to touch at the peak of the tunnel, as shown here with the arrow, and it's just barely going to touch at the string. And remember that your straight member will be on the exterior of your structure, running across the string and the exterior of your hoop peak. Once your horizontal member is in place, you're going to put a torpedo level on the horizontal member so that you can adjust plumb across that horizontal member. And to do that, you'll adjust the brace band on the top of your cross brace by moving it up or down. And this will move the hoop in or out. And when your level reads plumb, you'll take a uh, socket wrench or an impact driver and you'll tighten down the top of that cross brace. Repeat this process uh, on the other side. You could do this once at the peak only with a large straight member, but I feel like it's more precise if you do it on each side as shown here. So go ahead and, and plumb up on that other side, adjusting the, the brace band as needed and, and tightening down on that top brace band once you find plumb. This is what I'm gonna do right here with my impact driver. After this step, the bottom of your cross brace will look like this picture with the brace band resting on the top of the ground post. The top of your cross braces will look like this. Here's one last look at a cross brace from bottom to top. 
At the end of these steps, you should now have two end walls that are plumb and ready for horizontal members. If you're interested in watching more videos like this, please subscribe to our channel. If you're interested in seeing some of the materials that were used in the installation process that you saw here, please check the description below.